Hey everybody, welcome to the studio. I'm Andy. Today we are going to do a live loop version of Book of Love, written by the Magnetic Fields and made famous by Peter Gabriel. Afterwards, I will uh, break it down as I usually do, show you how you can do this too. Super fun, super easy. It's awesome. Let's do it.
long and boring No one can lift the damn thing It's full of charts and facts and figures And instructions for dancing But I stuff running and uh, I, that's why we had it that's why we heard a CPU glitch or two I mean we do have a lot of stuff going on but we don't usually hear hear the little the little glitchers you know so what are you gonna do uh, so that was book of love let me probably plug my monitor in so that you can see what we're doing I can see it being useful in this case, in this circumstance. So that was a live loop performance. You saw me put in all the loops on the fly. We did that straight into Ableton, and then we uh, used Ableton's scene functionality business to, uh, let me probably shut this down, sorry. We used Ableton scenes to then, you know, populate this whole song. And then we used the foot controller, you know, here for uh, controlling the actual, you know, the, the production that we had just stuck into Ableton. So uh, let's go look at Ableton. This is what we ended up with. So what I started with was basically uh, all of this blank. Where's my mouse? There it is all of this blank and so we basically stack up row number or scene number one the first row and so we start with piano and uh, here I can drop these in in Ableton if you click the stop thing over here on the master that stops all clips and then you can do stuff like this without triggering the whole scene if that's interesting to you I don't know um, so we just did those one by one.
three acoustic guitars and piano. We went on to the bass, to the, to the drums, the little bit of electronic drums. Uh, left guitar and right guitar. My guitar is in the middle and then a little uh, leg slappy. I was supposed to put that here in this break section as well, but I forgot to when I was copying stuff out. Uh, and then we have a cello. It's a long cello. We also have a short cello. And then we have Anna. The synthesizer is like a pad. two guitars. The guitars are, one is a DV Mark is the amp, I think. No, that's my regular amp. Like which one? Are they both that way? Yes, they are. That's pretty lame. <clears throat> Usually I would use different amps on that stuff. I'll change that up right now. We're going to put a DV Mark for this one. And we're going to use, where did the guitar? I'm using all mouse so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Usually I'd be like this. It's much more fast. Uh, so this one we're going to go high gain metal. Uh, let's go rectifier. That's basically the whole project. So once that whole first row is is popped in there, then it's just a matter of uh, really looking. You know, for me, I just it's looking at the lyrics. I can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sections. Basically, I want to when I and I like to do right after everything's put in for the first verse, break it down to like you know almost nothing. So I break it down to just the piano and the pad. And then we've got, after that, one, two, three, four, five scenes. So after that, uh, we do a verse, and I made that, uh, I think I put the strings into there. Uh, the acoustic guitars stay throughout the whole thing. You know, you just make the make the, the chorus-y kind of stuff different from the verse-y kind of stuff, and then your project is all set up and ready to go. And... Uh, then it, go back to your foot switch. So on the foot switch, this is the uh, pacer. Probably see it better here. Nectar pacer. So um, my setup, I have this row set up to do uh, the looping stuff. So up here, the first row and the second row, I have all mapped all the way across, uh, is mapped to three different banks of this foot thing. So on the, whoops, on the foot thing, <clears throat> if I go to patch called loop one, then this is the first cell, piano, acoustic, 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 uh, acoustic drums, and then bass. This one's not in use for this project, and then bass. And then uh, in my next group over, where I preset up one to loop two, then I have, if we go back up to here, the pink tracks, which is the electronic drums that we use, the guitar, and uh, the two vocal mic tracks, it's just those are ambient junk. Uh, then the cello's on five, or cello's on six. And then the next bank over, we go up to loop three, loop set three, and then there's those controls. Those all function pretty easily. You just uh, press them once to start the loop, press them again to stop the loop. Uh, easy peasy. Even prior to that, you can press them once to activate that track. So the actual process is you start things going, and you uh, decide, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to do the piano on this one. Um, and so I can even, here, we'll, we'll erase all this stuff in here, and I'll talk it through a little bit as I do it. How easy and how fun. So you get your stuff ready to loop. You're all set to go. Your loop lengths don't really necessarily matter because in this case, um, I'm starting and stopping everything with my feet. So 
I'll get on my loop preset one. And again, this has uh, these buttons, these five buttons. Whoops, wrong. Keep going to Raven. Has these five buttons here are mapped to those first or six buttons mapped to the first six cells. And when you look up here, that's the uh, like yellowish, orangish, brownish cells. These first six. So piano is on button one. And when I'm ready, I just press it. Oh, it needs to be record armed first. So once the record arm is set and you have it, uh, there's an options file uh, in your Ableton preferences and you can go in there and, and turn on arm on selection or arm on select. It's well documented in Google. Uh, you can find it pretty easy, but alter that. And then when you go between your tracks, um, as I wait, loop one, like as I click them and nothing happens what have I lost I wonder let's check oh. and occasionally in the world of MIDI that's a thing that happens uh, I've never had it happen during a set or something like that, where you just have to unplug or turn your MIDI device on and off again. It's like Ableton drops it. I don't know. But so one press gets you to the track or the channel that you want to mess with. So I'll press once to get to piano. Now my piano is active. I will press it again to start the loop. I hear a click. You don't. Two, three, four. Click it again going and so that was two presses one press to get to the next track one press to start the loop going another press to stop the loop from going and that's the entire process you move right through you put all your loops in duplicate them up through the song if that's the way you want to do it play it back and you're off to the races so give it a shot if you are uh want to know even more more in depth of how i came into this looping scenario or functionality of how this works. Um, I have other videos, just check them out. I think when I discovered that that's how I want to do it, this stuff, uh, I was like, you know, doing a video. So me figuring it out, it's all there for you to watch. Cheers. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Go make something cool. Ciao.